Hi, Jeff here, and welcome to another tutorial in the Diva 4.0 tutorial series. So they, today we'll look at how to link a daylighting model in Diva with our energy analysis in ArcSim. And we'll do this by creating schedules uh, for shading and lighting in Diva, and then applying them to our energy simulation in ArcSim. Here, so for, uh, for the model, we have the example office that we were using in previous tutorials. I have the daylight model shown, and we're basically going to be referencing the analysis that we did in tutorial 5, where we um, modeled dynamic shading for a window and we generated shading schedules as well as um, we saw how we can, the potential for generating a lighting schedule. We, we will be referencing the data that we ran in that simulation. So to see how we set that up, you can go back to tutorial 5. For the energy modeling component, we will be using um, the setup that we had uh, that we had used for our previous energy um, simulations, and we'll be referencing some of the schedules and custom materials that we um, that we created in the in the last two tutorials. I should mention that the uh, that the geometry that we'll be using for the energy modeling portion um, is limited only to the south facade because from that fifth tutorial for Diva, we looked at the shading schedules for this south. Um, the south facing glazing and so we're going to be using those schedules to uh, modify the schedules the, the control schedules for the thermal model only for this southern zone and instead of modeling the rest of the building for thermal zones um, and making it a multi-zone model we'll just make this a single zone model and we'll use adiabatic services for the um, surrounding walls, the interior walls, and I'll, I'll go into how we set that up um, a little bit later in this tutorial. So first, you can see here I have the, um, the exact same component set up that we used from tutorial 5, where we had our, our grid input, um, which referenced the grid geometry that we were using in our reference um, office, and we had created a grid with a 1 meter spacing as a result of that. And we have our windows um, in our model for the south facade uh, referenced on this window component. And you can go, go back to tutorial 5 to see how we set that up. We also put the other glazings um, in our model on a separate layer just to, just to kind of take into, into account some of the adjacent effects um, since it's an open office. But that is all um, kind of carried over from that fifth tutorial, which you can reference. Now, we don't have to run the simulation again in order to pull up the data for the window schedules and the um, grid results. What we just need to do is have our um, annual daylight component on the canvas, and we have to provide the name of the directory where we saved our results from our previous run. And then we can plug in the um, window output into the window viewer component in the um, Diva 4.0 components. However, you see I have set up a list item component from Grasshopper and a, a number slider that's set to integers um, in the index input so that I can scroll through the different windows um, to see the different results. And you see, you'll see that in Grasshopper, as I scroll through the different items, the window will change in the preview uh, um, in the south facade, but the schedule it, it would change if the windows had different properties were in different orientations, but since they all face the same way, the shading schedules are exactly the same. And again, the gray is when the shade is going to be down or in the closed position, and the light blue is when the shade is open. Now, if I plug in the grid output into the, um, the list input of this list item component, which then takes the data to the grid viewer component um, in, a, in a way that's itemized according to our index, you'll see that a, our false color grid from our results um, from our Diva simulation um, reappears, and a lighting schedule will appear in the schedule component from um, Diva 4.0. And this component, again, is um, you can refer back to the um, fifth tutorial to see how we um, set up these schedules, but you can place the schedule viewer component onto the canvas here um, in order to set that up. Now you'll see that if I drag this here, just to make it a little bit more visible, if I scroll through the different items, the different grids in our list, you'll see that the the shading, the lighting schedule, excuse me, and the resulting um, analysis grid with the false color on it will um, change accordingly.
Now there are three items in the list, and you see that the corridor, which is furthest from the glazing, has the highest amount of lights turned on as a result. The white in the schedule would um, indicate when the lights are turned on. There's an occupancy schedule, or an occupancy sensor, excuse me, in this control system so that it, the lights are turned off when there is no occupancy. But if I move my index to the middle zone, um, you see that there is a, there are fewer lights that are turned on in the middle of the day, and then the, the control group that's closest to the fa facade has the least amount of dependence on artificial light. Um, the artificial lights, the electric lighting is turned off um, uh, more of the time for this particular schedule. The grid was divided up into these separate areas for different lighting control groups, but for the purposes of this tutorial, since we're only doing a thermal model for the entire zone, I'll go ahead and just use the lighting control group that's closest to the facade. It will um, underestimate a little bit the lighting energy, but um, for the comparative purposes, it, it will be okay for this tutorial. And I'll use this shading schedule. Um, now, what we want to do is con convert these into ArcSim schedules that we could use for our energy model. And we do this essentially the same way that we had looked at at the end of the previous tutorial, which is to create array schedules. So in the ArcSim components tab, under the array schedule, under the schedules panel, the array schedule component is pictured here, and I have it already plugged in and set up. Now, what you just have to do is um, use the is to plug in the output, the value output of the Diva schedule, which is a list of 8,760 hours of the year um, between zero and one, and plug that in to the hour input because it's exactly the input type that the array schedule requires in order for it to be converted to an energy plus schedule. So by, by plugging that in and giving it a name, I'm calling the shading schedule Diva Shading, and I'm calling the lighting schedule Diva Lighting. We now have compatible schedules for the shading and lighting that are um, able to be read by ArcSim to be sent to Energy Plus, the simulation engine. So I take these two schedules and by holding on Shift, I plug them into the schedule input of our library component, which we utilized in previous tutorials to create custom materials, constructions, and library and uh, schedules. And I'm also plugging into this library component the simple glazing construction that we used in our previous tutorial that we created um, by looking at a kind of curtain wall um, buildup that we looked in, in the Windows tool. And we created um, an assembly that incorporated the U value of the aluminum thermally broken frame and um, has the solar heat gain coefficient, the U value, and the, um, the visible light transmittance values uh, input here into this component. And we have that input into the library component so that it's available for our, our thermal simulation in ArcSim. So you could refer back to that last tutorial to see how we set this up. Now for the ArcSim part, I um, have a similar setup to our previous energy modeling tutorials. I took the components from the multi-zone model, and since we're only using one zone, this southern zone, I'll go ahead and um, turn the preview off temporarily for this grid component so we can see how we set up the thermal zone. And I'll turn off our daylight model for the moment. You see that um, I've made a, a slight modification to the um, to the thermal model. I made the glazing a little bit bigger to, to more closely match the glazing geometry in our daylighting model. We're only using this one perimeter zone, this south facing zone, so that um, so you can see my zone input for the thermal zone is just this one trapezoidal southern zone. We're not going to use the other perimeter zones of the core uh, because we just want to isolate this south-facing zone, and we want to um, we want to indicate to the thermal model that these three walls are not facing the exterior. They're adiabatic. They're, there's no heat transfer happening to those, um, and to do this without having to. In um, include other zones in your model, we can use the boundary condition, condition component. And I've set here these three walls as surfaces, and they're input into this BREP component, and adiabatic is set um, here. And just to be sure, I'm going to select those surfaces and indicate the directionality. Um, I have them facing our zone, which is what we want. And this boundary condition object um, adiabatic service input is sent to the BCO input of the zone connectivity network component. 
The zone connectivity network component is also where we are sending our windows. And as I mentioned before, I created a larger window here to more closely represent what we have in our daylighting model. And it's the only beer up that's included in um, as an input into the window component. Great, and now the, um, the zone connectivity network mo uh, model output gets input into the model input of the energy plus component. And I've renamed my energy, my um, simulation diva underscore sketch. And then the directory where I'm locating it is in the um, arcsim results folder in the subfolder um, that has the same name as our simulation. Um, we're using the Boston Logan um, climate file to match what we had run previously in our daylighting model. And for the, the settings, I have a monthly um, simulation where I'm looking at the January 1st to December 31st, the full year. And I have lights, electric energy, and I have um, total uh, zone ideal loads, total heating, and total cooling energy selected as output variables. So in my ArcSim components, I'm going to want to assign first um, some schedules to the model so that I have something to compare it to. So for lighting, um, you see that I already have the, the Diva lighting schedule and the Diva shading schedules are, are now appearing on the list of available schedules for our simulation. Um, for the lights, for the, begin, um, for the beginning here to do a kind of control, I'll just go ahead and set the lights office as our schedule, which is what we had before. Um, for, the, for this simulation, I'll actually leave, uh, I'll leave the dimming schedule off so that we have a basis of comparison um, that we can uh, see the, the extent to which the D.Va control schedule will improve the, um, the, the lighting energy use for our example office. And um, for the constructions, we, I'll just use the same constructions in other settings that we had set up for our previous tutorial. For the windows, I want to make sure that our glazing construction is our uh, that we have it set up with our new material that we have we had assigned. So the aluminum frame um, double low E, which we had created um, in our previous tutorial. So I'll make sure that that's selected, and I'm turning the shading system on. And you see that the Diva shading schedule now appears as one of the schedules because we had input it into the library. And I'll leave the the shading on for both um, for both of these. Uh, the before and after, I'll, I'll test the lighting schedule as a kind of variable. So I'll go ahead and leave that selected. So we'll go ahead and run a baseline. Um, I, I want to see what our lighting energy, I have some output components set up here with the, lo the load results, um, load zone results components set to true, and then I'm adding up my results um, and converting them to kilowatt hours. And then I, I want to be able to compare the lighting energy intensity and the cooling energy intensity of our, um, of our baseline uh, using the the office lights schedule and then compare that to the diva schedule. So I'll go ahead and run this simulation. And I'll plug the output, the model output into these two um, load results components. You see that this first one is for the lighting energy only and it's normalized. And the second one is for the cooling energy only and it is also normalized. So here we have 48 kilowatt hours per meter squared and 74 uh, for, for lighting energy intensity and 74 for the cooling energy intensity in terms of kilowatt hours per meter squared. I'll go ahead and make one change to my model for the, I'll leave the shading schedule in the, uh, for the window and I'll go ahead and in the zone settings under the lighting, I'll go ahead and change the lighting schedule to the Diva lighting schedule. So now instead of using just a basic lighting schedule where the lights are turned on when people are on in the office, I can now use the lighting schedule that is generated by our analysis. That's a, a function of um, it's a function of the amount of light that's um, reaching our sensor nodes and um, the occupancy sensors that are inside our space. So it's going to correspond with the um, hourly analysis that we ran in our more detailed DIVA analysis. And we plug this into our schedule. So it's going to give us, a, it should be giving us a savings of lighting energy um, because of the, the lighting control associated with the DIVA model, and we should also expect to have lower cooling energy intensity as a result because of fewer lighting gains. So I'll go ahead and run this new simulation, and we'll just take a look at those output numbers um, to compare them to pre the previous numbers.
And you'll see that with those schedules, there are lighting energy intensity now has lowered uh, to six kilowatt hours per meter squared. And our cooling energy intensity is now at 43.5 kilowatt hours per meter squared. So this uh, workflow gives you a way to make a, a strong connection between some of the um, more sort of detailed analyses that you can do using the daylighting tools that you can use to generate schedules um, in Diva that can be converted to ArcSim schedules to be utilized for um, energy simulations um, to test against um, different options um, in your building performance analyses. All right, that sums things up. Um, thanks for joining me for this tutorial.